These two have never met before in the Crucible. They did beat in the final of the European Open in March, and Parrot won by the score of 10 frames to 6. Here's the first frame they play. It's underway. It's Hendry at the table. There's no score. too thick and the first opportunity goes to John Parrott Changed his mind there from a deep screw to a stun run through. And the way they're going, yeah. there's, they're going to open up very nicely. He's got a slight angle on the black, but uh, looking to see that he doesn't collide with the red on the side cushion. That's if he plays the deep screw. John, quite rightly here, taking his time. Knows this is very important to get a good start. 24. Very, very sensible play by uh, John in these opening stages. He took as many reds as he could around the pack, knowing that he'd got three or four lovely open reds that if he got into trouble, he'd got a big margin of error. So that's good thinking. Brown won't spot, no other spot available, so it just goes above its own spot in a direct line down the centre of the table. 30. Thank you. 
43. 43. Mayor Stewart had an angle on the blank doesn't need to go into the pank if he can just click that left hand red there of the pack it will leave an option of two into this right hand corner pocket to uh, hear the audience clapping a, a shot like that. Uh, it's nice to see that they appreciate these, what apparently appear to be simple shots. Fifty-nine. Might be a little too far on this one. Yes, but what a tremendous break this has been. Never been in any trouble whatsoever. So for the first time in a bit of trouble, got 60 in front, possible 67 on the table. I think we'll probably see him take this blue on, because he has got a bit of insurance there with the red against the side cushion and the brown and pink tied up. got an option of trying to pop the blue and go safe as well but uh, now he's gone for plain safety very wise I think. Well, that's not too disastrous from John. <coughs> I think Stephen has a red into the set centre here, but has to get on the blank. Can't afford, of course, not to get a colour with this red. And that was the trouble for Stephen. Now 51 points behind. 51 on the table, unless he pots a colour. But I think he'll probably want to try and split that brown and pink up. 
Now it looks like he's taking the blue on. Stephen Hendry, nine. Surprising. That was very much on the cards. And that makes a big difference, John. Yes, of course. Gives Stephen a bit of leeway now. And of course, there is open the brown and the pink up so much different game now than it was two or three minutes ago and i think john may be wishing he'd taken that blue on when he played safe This little shot like that uh, can turn a f frame, and uh, that's the sort of thing that John mustn't uh, let get to him. He's had it nice and straightforward so far. So Steve, no, he has to get a black. And anything no. brown or over would be sufficient. pocket uh, made that a very difficult shot. But may have been fortunate. May be possible into the centre, but it's quite a narrow angle, is this? a very difficult shot. I'm surprised that uh, Stephen took that on, John. Well, it was certainly more difficult than it actually looked on the TV screen. A very narrow angle. <laughs> and that, of course, puts John 29 points in front now, so Stephen requires snookers. And that's the strange thing, Jack, about the game. The bad shot John played when he went in off was one in the frame. Yes, it's a funny old game, John, but uh, my goodness, I assume now that uh, 
John has won Six. this frame, but had he have lost it, it might well have been the start of a very bad run. Nine. Factory start for John Parrott. He leads one frame to nil. Bad shot there from Stephen. Certainly not settled down yet. Attempted the pot, but certainly didn't mean to take the white so high up the table. Oh, the green has rather spoilt his fun here. He would had not have kissed that, he'd have been right up close to the red, or at least halfway up the table, looking at a nice red and a black. John Parrott, six. So that's another bad miss there by Stephen. And he certainly can't afford to miss many of those because each time he misses a shot like that, it's going to give John more and more confidence. Now, 
this time. I think he's a little better on this red. And this is the last loose red, so needs an angle on the black here. 33. And that looks about perfect. Just looking where he wants to try and hit the reds to get the best split. But they're quite loosely packed there, so it would be unfortunate, I would think, if he didn't finish on a red here. Everything looking good. 48. There's a slight risk here if he uh, takes the red into the right hand corner. He's got to go into the reds or play a deep screw. Can't be sure. Keeps the pressure on Stephen, making him pay for every mistake. Just the black and one more red required. Yellow gives the nice angle, nice free running cue ball here if he gets the yellow nicely. Just getting the direction, maybe slightest touch of right hand side. Well, it hasn't broken really nicely but if he can get this red he's still in Sixty-seven. Sixty-eight. Seventy. 
17. of course if John can clear these leave Stephen cold <laughs> uh, bad luck but what a beautiful day yeah 76 and Parrott went on to take a 4-0 lead before Henry had won a frame Here's the eighth. It's now 5-2 to Parrot, and he's ahead 47 to 23 with this chance to go further. That's the kind of pot that he would usually knock in. Stephen just couldn't impart enough spin to the cue ball to check it back behind the red. The red is still on, but it's not an easy pot. Oh dear. And at that speed, it had to stay in the jaws should he miss it, so he went all out for that one. said that uh, if you're going to have a bad session in one of these longer matches at the World Championship, it's as well to have it in the first or second session of that match. And uh, Stephen's not had too good a first session. But there is a long way to go, and he hasn't lost this frame yet. The difference, 20 points. Well, he didn't play it like that, but... Uh... Pick the bones out of that one, John Parrott, says Stephen Hendry, because this is tricky. Only possible chance, I think, is off the right-hand side cushion. Past the blue. But he's got to uh, virtually at the back cushion as well. There may, may be a chance of missing the brown on the weight of the bought cushion with sufficient side on the white to just snick the yellow. Now he's been and had a look at that shot. And 
and the chances of not leaving a free ball if he doesn't hit the yellow is are very remote so he's in some trouble here well Stephen Henry five So the free ball's been given. Two. If he can get out onto the blue now, that's the key shot. Ten points behind. Nine. And it'll be a very relieved Four. young man if he can take pink and black. Hasn't played particularly well. 20. Well, he could have been 6-2 behind this black. So important. So he's got out of jail, and at the end of the first session of this semi-final, Stephen Henry trails by five frames to three. That was hard work. So Jimmy White. Ninth frame, Stephen Henry to break. Oh dear, and I was about to say that Stephen would be welcoming this very early opportunity because uh, it's nothing like getting off to a good start when you're trailing a little. So now he's given the opportunity to uh, John here. At least the black and the pink are tied up, so he's got to get started here probably with the blue. Prizes for guessing what the next shot's going to be. Blue cannon into the pink, which will then disturb the reds.
John Claret, 12. Yellow comes to the assistance of uh, John here. But again, he's got to work hard for a colour. Stephen just having luck if he can possibly get to the pink. Obviously hasn't got the angle on this red into the right centre to get good position on the blue. Well, decided to play for the black. And of course, if you can get position off this, get the black on its spot, this is a great opportunity. Well, that's rather messed things up a bit. He's certainly got to do things with care now. Yes, Jack, and this is probably one of the worst positions you could get. The cue ball tight up against the red. And he's going to take a chance on the one in the right centre. He needs to get this. Well, Jack, there's one thing about this young lad. He's brave. Yes, you'd certainly say that. He's, uh, he's got an old head on young shoulders. Forty. Forty Nicely seven. on this red, and more importantly, if he decides to play it now, well, he's looking at the red into the center pocket. thought he could have played that red then. It was a chance to open up the other reds because he's going to need more than one more red in a colour after this blue. Did he get as good as angle as he had before? 
Well, that's almost in the same position, so that's perfect. Pot this red and open the other four. Already with a 48 point lead. It's a formality now, you would think. Snook is required. 68. And Stephen showing no signs whatever of tension or nerves. In fact, he looks very free indeed. Well, just a little short, but uh, not too bad. However, not of great importance. So the best of starts there for Stephen Hendry. Couldn't wish for more than that. So he's now pulled one back and trails four frames to five. And what a different Stephen Hendry to the one we saw struggling against John Parrott last night. And John Parrott uh, could have gone in 6-2 up. The fact that he didn't, even more important now, just one frame between them. The extension goes on the Hendry Q in the next frame, 6-0 up. Stephen Henry, seven. Wow, what a marvel.
Nicholas Folk and John apologizes, but trust that he will be able to take full advantage. Well, that's not bad, is it? Yes, nicely on the red. He's just having a look around at the black. I think the black would be the easiest ball to play on. Of course, they are missable along the top cushion. But if you did get the black on its spot, this is definitely a frame winning chance. And a perfect angle on this black. All he's got to do is pot it, and he'll automatically be on the red. John Parrott, well, there you could see the slight snatch in uh, John's action there. That was very revealing. Yes, Jack, but why didn't he just roll it in dead weight? It'd have made the pot easier. Yes, that's exactly what I mean, John. You know, we don't see enough of those sort of shots just showing the fault. Mind you, having said that uh, it's a fault, it's something that's very difficult not to do at times. Well, he didn't land too well on that. He caught it right in the meat of the pack, and uh, he's got away with it anyway. Yes, I'm not, think I'm not certain whether got away with it is the right expression, Jack. He'd have been very unlucky there not to be on a red. Yes, that's a fair comment, John. But it's certainly a great opportunity that Stephen's got here to square the match. Already 47 points in front. This colour, one more red in a colour, and that would be for certain. This is one of the great strengths of uh, Stephen. He's got a lot of grit and fight. He just wants to win badly. 
and that's not a bad th thought. Sixty-three. And John remains seated, and that's another one back. So we're now situated at five frames all. could register the alarm there as uh, John missed that. Steeden was up like a shot. One. And this young man's really hunting today. He's feeling like it. That's the thing with Stephen Hendry, not frightened of leaving himself these middle distance pots. Seven. Very less, rarely missing them. And this is another great chance to put another frame on the board. the result of a rather careless previous shot. He was easy to get on that red that he's missed, but he didn't. One. Now this is a chance that John must really try and make capital of. And that's very nicely played now. He's got a chance to uh, just get the balls apart here. Oh, why so hard? Jumped up in the air. My goodness, he should look at a video of that. I think the last thing you want to see, Jack, is a video of that shot and probably this frame because I think he's lost it now. 
Ah, there's always a future though, John. Disappointed? Of course. Ten. Eleven. Seventeen points the lead. Pink. Last red and reasonably sized colour. Stephen Hendry has won the first four frames of the afternoon session. 17. Stephen Henry, 24. And that was four in a row this afternoon to Stephen Hendry. John Parrott did it to him last night. The compliment returned. So John Parrott suddenly on a bad run. Here's Henry to break in the next frame. 7 5 up. So that's not the start that John Parrott needed you, after the mid-session interval. Had a disastrous first four frames this afternoon. And uh, Stephen Hendry in devastating form. Is, this has got to be a bit of a chance for him.
this little bout of safety won't do uh, John Parrott's cause any harm. He needs to just have a few moments to get into this match. Steady Stephen Hendry a little. Prolonged safety duel going on here as both players are trying to force their opponent into error. And that could be a chance for John if the red will pass the pink to the corner. If that red's not on, nothing else is easy. It was a good pot from Stephen. He could see a path through the reds with the cue ball, but not really on a colour. In attempting that snooker behind the yellow, I think he's left the red on. The path of the cue ball off the Red would be into those other reds. Trusting to luck off this shot as to whether he'll be on a, a colour or not. Yes, it wasn't worth the risk in the end, even if the pot was on. Stevens brought a red down with the cue ball. And uh, I think John must have a go at this. Virtually a shot to nothing. And actually, he's played a little too defensively. Walked the cue ball back too far for the green or brown. And... Uh, 
Even if he can knock the blue in, not a lot he can do with the cue ball. But it's gained him the initiative, and now <laughs> Stephen Hendry trying to get the cue ball safe. John Williams deeming it a, a miss there by Stephen. And that looks to be about the same place. Well, John Parrott, four. A little nearer this time and uh, well, perhaps John Williams believes that uh, it was a pretty difficult snooker to negotiate. But as ever, he's the arbiter. Had an angle to bring the cue ball back to the reds, but the reds are not favourable for break building. So he he's hoping for a, a further mistake here from Stephen. Well, Stephen's looking not too concerned, and uh, again, I think John Williams is definitely right because Stephen's finding exactly the position that doesn't leave John Parrott a chance to get in at all. I don't think the crowd are clapping the referee. I think they're quite amused. Well, if you're just turning on BBC Two now for Snap, the photography program, the repeat of SNAP, um, we have actually uh, decided to not show that at this point in the afternoon because of the earlier coverage of the House of Commons has uh, cut back the snooker quite a lot, so it's been decided that the snooker will continue. So our apologies if you've turned on for the SNAP program. We're going to keep on with the snooker and this semi-final between John Parrott and Stephen Hendry, and indeed I can tell you that we are going to go through with the snooker now until six o'clock. Well, John actually getting a little bit frustrated. Had a go at one that was certainly not easy. One. 
And Stephen Hendry uh, rather punishing the mistakes earlier this afternoon. And a great chance to do the same thing again. 7. Just laying onto the black with the cue ball to hold position, but it's tucked the black away. You can long pot to the corner now, and he'll still have the pink, or he can follow through for a balk colour. That's one I didn't expect Stephen to miss. So now the opportunity of a break passes over to John. Played for the pink, but not enough power in the shot. John had his usual confidence working for him. He'd play the blue and be on the red that's in Bork next shot. He's been missing his long pots and it's quite apparent here that he doesn't fancy the blue. Stephen Henry wasn't left in any difficulty by John Parrott's previous shot. And now John Parrott is liable to pay the penalty for it. It was quite an unusual choice of shot that John took on. And uh, he's now in trouble. was a good pot and what an excellent kiss steering the cue ball onto the pink he couldn't have placed it better
every chance of taking the frame from this position, the way the balls are. Well, this black's not quite as easy as it might have been. Still on, but uh, would have preferred it straighter. So the difference now, 28 points. Red and the black would uh, leave John Parrott wanting a snooker. make sure of the black here not so important to get onto the last red that's tucked up safely and now roll 51. the red down the table and drop the cue ball behind the yellow and uh, Stephen Henry looks as if he's uh, going to increase his lead So this uh, last clearance, purely academic, Stephen Hendry had won this frame a few shots ago, but hasn't lost the frame this afternoon so far, now leads eight frames to five.
Henry's day, tremendous stuff from him uh, this afternoon. Now, if you're switching on, uh, what, just after ten past five for the repeat of Horizon, our apologies, that's not being shown this afternoon, but it will be shown at a later date. The reason is that the House of Commons debate and uh, statement from the Home Secretary on the Strange Ways uh, prison riot uh, took quite a bit of our uh, snooker time this afternoon, and we want to bring you uh, proper coverage and extensive coverage of this uh, semi-final second session, so that's exactly what we're going to do, and we're going through till six o'clock in this program to do just that. Interesting one for Mr. Hendry, five on the trot then, five in a row this afternoon so far after uh, starting the afternoon, five, three down. Into the next frame now, it's John Parrott to break and in need of a bit of encouragement, I would think. 14th frame, John Parrott to break. Well, John Parrott has been struggling and he wants a few pieces of luck like that. If the cue ball hadn't caught the left middle knuckle, it would have certainly wouldn't have been behind the brown. Well, that was a very difficult shot to attempt, and uh, although John has left a chance for Stephen, I don't think he'll take it on. It's much too dodgy, and he'll try and put the cue ball down behind the yellow.
Stephen Hendry, four. <laughs> Stephen uh, being a little bit playful there, I'm sure. He just uh, looked at the referee and smiled and said, was it a miss? But uh, I don't think he was being at all serious. It was a good attempt by John Parrott. That's another very good safety shot. Keeping a lot of pressure on John, just preventing him from settling down. didn't get the cue through to the top cushion as he intended and he's left this reasonably easy red to the corner so Stevens first away again going to have to play some good snooker now good potting good position called for he's really only the blue to work with for the time being 12 Eighteen. Well, he's going to want a good shot now to uh, continue the break. Hot in the blue shouldn't be too much of a problem, but the next red might be. Oh, and that's a lovely shot. And refusing the fairly straight one there for one in the other side. A nice angle to drop the cue ball down for the blue or pink again. Stephen has a, an angle to the yellow to get the cue ball back to the red. Thirty-two. 
The pink is onto the centre, but he may try and bring the pink ball out of the cluster with this shot. Well, it's not 100%, but he can sight the angle to the centre pocket fairly comfortably. And now the situation is beginning to look really good. 41. And a uh, quite remarkable turnaround in this match after last night's Fifty session. Four. John Parrott should have been 6-2 up last night. Stephen Hendry seemed to be exceedingly lucky to get out of just uh, two frames behind, but this afternoon, John's really not been in it. Just run out of position a little here, Stephen on the verge of winning this frame. Not quite done enough yet. Stephen Henry, 55. Tending to get the cue ball in behind the yellow, but at the same time, pushing the green ball to a much safer position. Good tactics when his opponent's going to need all these balls. Oh, and that's a good shot. But once again, John Parrott's going to have a lot to do to win this frame. Less than a couple of minutes ago, Stephen Henry was looking almost certainly to have increased his lead. Two shots later, and the frame's wide open, and John Parrott, if he could manage to uh, get back into this frame or possibly win it from this, it would uh, perhaps turn the whole match around this session. John has snookered himself on the intended red. It wasn't a very good shot at all, and he's just ruined an excellent chance of taking the frame. Just not doing it today.
Eight. Nine. Well, I'm sure you could have had long odds 22. this afternoon before this session started about Stephen Hendry winning six frames on the bounce, but uh, 24. he's played pretty well this afternoon. 27. And he really does take some holding if he starts to see the balls well. 36. So that's enough. So Stephen Henry now leading nine frames to five. of breaks from uh, Stephen but not a deal that John can do with this red other than take the cue ball back with a lot of power down the other end and he would love to have been just another few inches down there and take the blue and come down nicely for the reds None. Ten. Well, the one red will go to this corner, and uh, as he knocks this one in, he'll scatter a few more about. 18. Didn't bring out too many there. Just one was moved. Thirty-six. 
33. Has to take the cue ball into the cluster again. So accurate pot call for. It's been unfortunate with the positional side of things. The yellow is about his best chance of continuing the break, but to pop the yellow and gain position is not going to be easy. It's got to be a first-class shot, this one. John Parrott, uh, he's just not doing it today, and the cue ball returning to its present position spells trouble for John. through far enough for the pink to the centre. Well, here's a further chance for John Parrott to take this frame. So that red will just go past the pink to the middle. Nine. Very important for John Parrott to uh, take this frame and salvage something out of what has been for him a disastrous afternoon. So the lead goes to 56. John Parrott wanting a red and uh, virtually any colour. Oh. oh, would you believe it? Well, that was really a very bad shot. Shouldn't have been anywhere near the middle pocket. So John Parrott in sight of uh, winning his first frame of the afternoon session suddenly has to sit back and uh, see if Stephen Hendry can capitalise on this. They're there for the taking. for the pink but he may be able to 
hold for a red or go right round the table off this pink. <laughs> Quite confident in taking the next Seven. red from the angle that he's left. Yes, that was a good shot. Well, the crowd applauds, but uh, I think he may have come too far over. Still on, but... Uh, didn't know where the cue ball was going. So a quick look at the scoreboard. He's 37 points behind. Just one red on the table. So he's got to have a go at a colour. This frame Henry, not over yet. And uh, he'll be a little disappointed. He thought that uh, he was going to pinch that one from that visit. Two, still two sessions of this semi-final to go and both players very much on edge. Oh, and what a, a great shot to nothing from John Parrott there. Stephen doesn't think a lot of it. As we said last night about Stephen Hendry, in a long match like this, you can afford to have one bad session. Better to have it early on. John Parrott's had his bad session. John Parrott, six. And barring a miracle, he's won this last frame. Yes, yeah, Stephen says, thank you very much. He's delighted with the afternoon. John Parrott will be delighted with having won one frame, but it's Stephen Henry who leads by nine frames to six. What a bad day then for John Parrott, but two more sessions to go there. Now, before we finish this programme... Under the pocket. Hello again. Well, here at the Crucible Theatre in Sheffield, we already know one of the finalists in this year's Embassy World Snooker Championship. Jimmy White is through after his superb win over the holder Steve Davis by 16 frames to 14. And White could win £120,000 if he does become the champion. But who will he meet? Well, it's either John Parrott, last year's runner-up, or Stephen Hendry, the most successful player of the season, and bidding to become the youngest champion at the tender age of 21. Well, after 14 frames of their 31-frame semi-final, Hendry led 9-5 after being 5-2 behind. 
He'd won seven frames in a row. At the start of the third session, Hendry couldn't do a thing right. He missed easy pots and let Parrot in time after time. mistake by Stephen. Well, Parrot took advantage of that situation and won two frames, to be only two down at 7-9. So here's frame 17. Hendry is behind by 29 points, and the commentators are Jack Carnham and John Spencer. was a peculiar shot. I, I thought uh, the direction was okay, but uh, I would have thought he should have played that much thinner than that. But he swerved into the ball with a lot of check side, and that could put him in trouble. Well, he may have been lucky here. The referee has declared a touching ball. Whether John can get to this red into the centre, if he can, an excellent chance of clinching the frame. And again, the shot from S Stephen, to me, was pure pressure. Hit it completely wrong. In fact, hit it very few shots right this morning. Six. Obviously, John fancies this one into the right hand corner pocket. <coughs> the big shot this for John, 38 points in front. You can knock this in. Could certainly build a frame winning lead. <coughs> Looks like he spotted a plant into his right hand corner pocket as well. Pouncing on this, it must be pretty straight. Excellent position. Get at that, he'll be disgusted with himself. 51 points in front, just one red required. a good solid start by John Parrott here. And he's done the main thing, he's kept the pressure on Stephen, not giving Stephen much of a chance yet. 
it says. So John Parrott takes the frame. Parrott only one down now, and here's the next. Hendry in play, and there's the score. Stevens 38 points behind here. This is probably the best chance he's had this morning. Just the one red against his back cushion. Stephen Henry, three. That's going in. Well, there you saw the indication with his arm there that he felt it turned in. Well, in fact, it should, of course. So that's nothing detrimental about the table. That's the nap of the cloth. However, it's a slice of luck for Stephen, and he should Ten. now be trying to take full advantage of that. Yes, and of course that could be the turning point. Seventeen. This could be the key shot of the frame. Not an easy pot and needs to get good position. Eighteen. And this is a tester. Stephen Henry. So 18. 23 in the get in front, so the fluke in actual fact has probably cost Stephen the game. Don't know what would have happened had the red not gone in, Jack. But we know now the fact that it did go in, we still lost the frame. Yes, I wonder if anybody will ever decide what causes luck and run of balls and so on. I suppose it's governed really, John, by the emotions within us that uh, make things happen. We, we, in fact, make them happen. However, I bet John's feeling marvellous at this very moment. Twenty. Well, we think unimportant as John Parrott takes the frame and we're all square. Nine frames all. Well, from that score, Parrott went on to win the next two, six in succession. He completely turned the tables on the young Scot. Here's frame 21, Hendry in play, and Ray Edmonds and John Virgo are now watching it for us. Eight. Nine. 
16. These are the first points that uh, Stephen has, has scored since the mid-session interval. Well, he's played for this. 32. The reds are going to open up somewhat. This red has got to go in. problem Stephen continuing to attack okay it's good to have positive thinking but he's just standing chances to John Parrott on the plate and John Parrott's got his tail up Again, Stephen, under no pressure to have a go at a pot there. It wasn't too difficult to play a safety shot. And uh, if John rolls this red in down the cushion, every chance. One. Nine. Well, that was a bad error by John, but it hasn't made many. Seven. He breathed a sigh of relief when that one dropped in. Yes, only just, but it went in. So could that be the little confidence booster now that Stephen needs? in front, nice angle on the blue. Twenty. Twenty-one. 
got the one loose red, just looking for another one. Because he's 50 points in front, red, pink, and one more red is required. So, the obvious red, but he needs one more. 28. 34. 35. So although John Parrott played a very bad shot and let Stephen in, this is a pretty good effort from the young Scott because he's had very few chances and uh, was looking very ragged. 41. And uh, shows how great a player is. Be able to come back. 42. And all of a sudden there's a new purpose in his step, John. Yes, it's funny how a game can change. He didn't really deserve to get this chance. Uh, it was John Parrott who missed. And what John Parrott must be thinking now, I don't know, because this was a great chance to go 12-9 in front. 48. 49. 50. 51. 52. Fifty-six. And when he gets a rhythm going, as I think I said the other night, he never looks like missing. This looks like being a great match for him. Fifty-seven. going to get a mighty cheer I think from the audience for winning that quite deservedly so finally the run of John Parrott has stopped and uh, now Stephen Henry just one frame behind in frame 22 Henry had a 64 break then Parrott replied with a 40 it's Henry to play finished very awkward for Stephen can't roll up behind the yellow so it's got to be the blue but now 25 points in front so important that John Parrott doesn't leave this last red John's problem as ever is even if he misses the red not leaving a free ball So that's the worst scenario for John Parrott. he can relax it was three frames up at the start of the session it looked as if he might go two behind but uh, now he's going to enjoy his rest this afternoon Stephen Hendry, 
14. Hendry Sprain, he was back level, 11 all. It's been an epic start to this one today as well. In the, there were six, nine overnight, Hendry doing well. This morning, a totally different story. John Parrott won five frames in a row to lead 11-9. Hendry managed to take the next two, so they're all square at 11 all. Well, 16 frames are the target, and we'll begin as they begin tonight. One of these two to play Jimmy White in this year's final. Here's the start of the evening. John Virgo and Jack Connum, your commentators. And it'll be Stephen Hendry to break. All square, 11 all. So, Stephen Henry, the first away. And really, this is a battle of nine frames. A match of 31, of course, and they're 11 each. Fine. Twelve. Well, a little 90. shorter pace there. But uh, this is very important for Stephen to have a reasonable start and get his cue arm working. We've seen that he can be frail at the start of sessions. Nice angle on the black. There is one loose red at the bottom of the cluster, which I'm sure he'll play for. A little bit short, but he won't mind that. In potting this now, he will be opening up the reds. And the only thing is, can the cue ball finish on a collar? Nine. 
Well, and the answer is yes, John. And look at the reds, my word. Yes, I was just going to say, Jack, when John Parrott hits the ball hard, they know about it, don't they? And maybe a little too hard there. And so now this opportunity goes to Stephen. Ninety. Twenty. Twenty-six. Yes, I think uh, Stephen was distracted there by somebody in the audience and very wisely stood up. And, uh, John Williams has put things to right. Yes, Jack, he was distracted earlier by the same source. In actual fact, just to the right of our commentary box is a position where photographers sort of hide behind the curtains taking pictures. And sometimes you can just see the curtain moving and hear the click of the camera. You'd think they've had enough pictures of him by now, wouldn't you? Well, John, he's, he's young and he's handsome. contrast to uh, his start in the earlier session when he was really dreadful. Yes, John Parrott, Jack Long, let him off the hook. 47. Yes, and he'll be ruining that uh, rather careless pink that he went for. Very tidy frame indeed. Colours on their spots, and he couldn't have wished for a better start. Sixty-six. 
71. So a splendid start of this session for Stephen Hendry. He leads 12-11. And this ever-changing match has now taken another turn. Hendry is back in the driving seat because he's taken the next as well. He leads 13-11. Here's the next. Parrott's down and planning something. Well, John Parrott's just had a look at a plant. Two balls together in the right corner, but uh, well, he's not going for it. It would have been very dangerous. And really, you feel this is a very important frame for John Parrott. You don't want to drop three behind at this stage of the match. Well, he's got a bit of scope here to work around the blue and the and the pink with these reds. Twenty. And there is a plant into the left-hand corner, so every chance here. Yeah, the blue might put a stop 25. to that though. But there is another red that will go. Twenty-six. And he's beginning to flow. I think Jack, he might have got a bad contact. Can John Parrott make him feel worse than he feels already?
six. Seven. This is the first real chance that John's had to get his hand on the table and put some points together. So this could do him a power of good. going along quite nicely but just when he needed good close control because the position on the next red isn't straightforward he's not got good position on his color good shot required now Got applause for getting around the table, but uh, the position is anything but healthy. This is really tough. Well, and that's a good shot. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Well, he's got back to two points behind now in this frame, but well, this blue's a toughie. And where's the next red coming from? play that shot a million times and it wouldn't have finished there. He felt certain he was going to kiss the black or the, one of the two reds. Great chance now for John Parrott. That looks to have gone begging, I'm afraid. One. That's not a good shot. Yes, this is a nasty one. This needs a little bit of thought. <coughs> to take the red off one cushion would be 
Well, rather demanding, and off too. He's got to miss the blow. Oh, that's a good shot. But he could be in trouble again here. Just the one point in it. Stephen knocked that red safe, so well, even if one of the players did get a chance on a red, it's not a formality to win the game in one visit. John has stepped around as though the red goes. Well, it certainly did. as old John Parrott can get through to the red near the right-hand corner pocket. So only a safety shot is the option, but he can get his hand on the table. Can he make it a good safety? looked as though he played to uh, putt it, but of course he didn't. But can John? That's the point. I don't think he can. Well, I'm right in line with the shot, Jack, and I don't think he can quite get it unless he uses a tremendous amount of side to bend the cue ball. And he couldn't do it, and under the circumstances, that's not a bad shot, but... He might be in trouble now. Good snooker. The two reds now in the open. Don't see what else John can do here, but just hit and hope. to drop on this red. So that'll be a big disappointment, John. He was just getting back into the position of pulling a frame back there.
Well, this isn't plain sailing now. This is a tough shot to get good position on the green off this yellow. It's gone wrong. But can he still pot it into the left centre? John Parrott will be hoping he can't. Stephen needs green and brown. Well, that was my word. That was a risky shot to play at this stage. I really feel that he should have left that alone. Silly boy. And that's not so good either. No, that's a poor shot. The only thing, good thing, Stephen obviously can't believe what he played on the green. But as far as John Parrott's concerned, he's just got to concentrate on the pot on the brown. The natural angle is to bring the cue ball back towards the blue. Straight as a die. <coughs> well, he could get another one here. Yes, Jack, but the main thing is he's not left a pot on the brown. John will be pleased with that. Too happy with that one, no? <laughs> oh, well, this this sort of shot is right up uh, Stevens Alley. A real firm, crisp stun shot. And that's nice to see. He stood there and watched it. Not important, or is it? John's coming back. Well, I should think so, Jack. He only needs one snooker to tie. And all he's got to do, I think the hardest part here, is to try and keep this pink out of the middle pocket and get it safe. And no, and not the white. So Stephen Hendry takes another frame. 14 11. So oh, look at Parrott's face. Three in a row for Hendry tonight. Five in a row in the match. It's become the topsy turvy semi final. Here's the next they've played. It's frame 26. Parrott's at the table. He's six points up, but he's snooping. Stephen Henry, four. Well, just look at that shot John's played. Can you believe that? One. Well, that will really put Stephen's tail up. And 
course, Stephen will be well aware of how John's feeling because he had a terrible session this morning. No. Yes, he looks uh, rather flushed. Oh, dearie me. Well, and poor John. Yes, my word. This running along the cushion and getting these flukes seems to be coming part of the pattern. That was a bad kick. And surely John Williams will be cleaning the ball. 26. And John Parrott previously won five games on the trot. Stephen has now returned the compliment and trying hard to make it six. off but that was a very unexpected miss but well just from an independent observer's point of view I think justice was done because it would have been unfair if, if you won the frame from that fluke say if John Parrott's going to stay Seven. in this match I feel he's now got to win this frame the chance has come and he's got to take it he's struggling at the moment the balls are just going that little bit awkward and with having had a bad trot everything looks much harder and that's all about confidence Seventy. 
So he gets his nose in front. 25. Just one ahead. Twenty-six. And every chance now. Yes, he's he's gone through a few nervy moments, but well, it's as easy as it can be in these situations. Thirty-two. Thirty-three. Thirty-nine. Fifteen points the lead. Still, still work to be done. Forty. He's going to need three of these remaining reds. 45. Two of them with colours. And the way he's avoided the red that's near the yellow, I assume it doesn't go in the left corner pocket. John, it doesn't go. So obviously, he's got to play a different route off this red to tackle it. And, well, he drops his head again, and surely it's possibly thinking about it and just losing that little bit of concentration. Well, Stevens had a recheck on the red to see that it doesn't go. Forty. And giving himself now an angle to move it or get the other side of it. too far. Eighty. So three points in it. And still all to play for. Colours are in their open, so first mistake on the red. And that player will probably lose the frame. The mistake was eventually made by Parrot, who left the red on, but only just, for Hendry. So, a reprieve there for John. Now then, an opportunity. One. Yes, of course, Jack, the only problem. 
Seems to be the brown. In actual fact, he's come in the middle of the table, not really good on any colour. The yellow, to me, looks as good as anything. We'd have to be playing it with the rest. Likewise with the green. Yes, that was the question there of just being brave and getting down and trying to forget the, the situation. He's done it well, now can he take advantage? Good idea, but not enough pace in the yellow. Depends on the shot now, green to brown. to do here. Yes, Jack, but he only needs the pink. Stephen Henry. 40. Well, now, come on, John, this is a question of do or die. Stephen Henry. Parrot losing a frame he really should have won and desperately needed to. It's 15-11. As, as a Henry went to his dressing room, he knew what he had to do. Just win one more out of the five to play, and he was in his first ever final. 
full. Ten. John Parrott, of course, at the point of no return, can't afford to lose another frame, and uh, that's often, often uh, helps to relax a player. Pressure eases a little. <laughs> but, of course, it soon comes back if... Uh, you get within sight of winning. quite as he would like on the black or the pink. And now a slightly awkward shot with the black, uh, with the rest. 30. leaving the cue ball a long way from the ball cushion. Oh, he's left this pot on for Stephen. <laughs> and he's very good at those long pots. Uh, what can he make from this now? There's an angle on the pink to the centre pocket now to disturb those reds. Never easy 
off the cushion rail. Still struggling to get high deal position. <laughs> but that's about perfect, so... Stephen Hendry with a wonderful chance. John Parrott sat there, not able to do anything about it, but just uh, sit and suffer. angle on the black you can maneuver the cue ball to take one of those touching reds to the center and of course if he makes this red 37 would automatically freeze the other one not difficult to get position on pink or black here so he's in a strong position 38 going for the pink to uh, give himself a nice angle to drop on the red. And uh, I think he's only got to pop this red really to 51. virtually assure himself of winning the frame. And the match of course. Just the green required. 56. And although Stephen hasn't played his best, John Parrott having won six frames on a trot, Stephen has replied with seven, seven frames on the trot to 60. win the match. So. Uh, It'll put him in good stead for the final. 68. So Stephen Hendry's in the world final, having beaten John Parrott by 16 frames to 11. Ladies and gentlemen, your appreciation for both players, for John Parrott and... Stephen, well done, and I'll come to you in a second, but for John, what an ever-changing match. Everything was different, wasn't it? Yeah, um, Stephen pointed out, I mean, both of us have won, like, 4-0. Whoever's got in and won the first frame has won the session 4-0. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous, uh, ridiculous match, the way we both had little spells of, of winning frames. I mean, you were on a big high this morning, you just roared ahead. Yeah, I'm obviously disappointed to be 11 all. I mean, I've managed to win the first four, go 11-9. Yeah. And um, 
uh, the first five, I had to go 11-9. Five. Yeah. And then, five in a row. You know, uh, you, even though you're happy to be 11 all, you're still a bit disappointed you haven't managed to win one of the last two. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, tonight I haven't really played, to be fair. What went wrong tonight? Um, it's, it's very hard out there as well, which doesn't help, you know what I mean? There's quite a bit of pressure out there, but I missed uh, my chance when I, uh, Stephen left the green over the hole and never yeah. got on the brown. I mean, that is the end of the match. You've got to take your chances when you get a chance like that, and I didn't do it. Stephen, for you, you must have been going through agonies this morning. I mean, you were a totally different player, and we sat and watched you, and the head was going down. I mean, I it looked like you couldn't put a ball. I know, that's what I said to John, I said it was a weird match. I mean, when I lost the first frame, I thought, oh, this is it, here we go again. And it's hard to get yourself thinking positive again when, when you know how the match has gone before, yeah. beforehand. And strangely enough, if I thought if I came out tonight and won the first frame, perhaps it might, the, the same pattern might come again, and I might win two or three in a row. And luckily well, I did. Also very important to get those last two this morning, wasn't it? That's right. I mean, where I summoned up the powers to do that from, I never know. I mean, <laughs> I just come out and... I, I, I was, I mean, I got out of jail twice, the first session to be only 5-3, yeah. and then yeah. today to, to be only 11-0 was, yeah. was tremendous for me. Yeah. I mean, the, the match was so fluctuating. It was almost like sort of four different matches, quite honestly, in, in, in the whole contest. That's right. Up um, and down. There was no, no real consistency from any of us, really. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if one of us had been consistent to playing well in four sessions, I think they would have won it. You've said many times before about how you, the, how you felt the pressure when you went out on the one table for a semi-final. Mm. Was that there again today? You're a much more experienced player now, but was it there? I think tonight, I, I, I kind of knew that, that no, no, not one of us was going to play brilliant snooker tonight. Yeah. I mean, when I got out there, that the pressure, I mean, I've not been there. I mean, last year I was beat, really, going into the last mm. session. Uh, but tonight, there's, there was pressure there with a capital P. There'll be pressure in the final. You got Jimmy White, and I can't help remembering what was it, 88? You played him. It was a great match, wasn't it? 13, right. 12. He got you. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable. If someone had told me when I first came here five years ago that I'd be playing Jimmy White, who's been my hero since I started uh, in the final of the World Championship, I said, "Get away, no chance." We're not getting away. We're staying for the next two days. And with that win tonight, whatever happens in the final, Stephen Hendry next season becomes the game's new number one. The seven-year reign of Steve Davis is about to end. So we have the final of the Embassy Championship of the World. Stephen Hendry to play Jimmy White for the big title and the big prize of £120,000. As I said, that takes place here tomorrow and Sunday. We have another programme to go tonight, that's at 11.30 this evening, and in that programme we'll bring you the story of one of the most remarkable sessions of snooker the Crucible has ever seen. The session that saw Jimmy White beat Steve Davis here today. Join us for that. Forty years after the birth of the People's Republic of China, Tiananmen Square yields an appalling legacy. Summer 1989, the People's Army massacres its own people. The story from a Chinese perspective. Tiananmen Square, a stage for history. Wednesday at 8.10 on 2. Newsnight in just over five minutes includes a special report from Romania by Julian O'Halloran on whether the ideals of the Christmas Revolution are being betrayed by the new leaders. And there'll be items on the release of the Winchester Three and the meaning of European political union. This to a stun run through.